Orthodox View, where we discuss latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I'm your host, Philip Champion. The persecution of the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church continues to intensify. Earlier this month, the Ukrainian authorities had announced their decision to expel all representatives of the canonical church from the ancient Kiev Pechersk Lavra, also known as the Kiev Lavra of the Caves, until the 29th of March. That includes over 200 monks, 200 students of the Kiev Theological Academy, and 300 staff employees of various administrative structures of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Now, why are they all being expelled from their own monastery? Because of their history of having a spiritual link with the Russian Orthodox Church. However, what we must remember is that the Ukrainian Orthodox Church is a huge denomination in Ukraine. In fact, it is the largest religious body in the country which includes millions of believers and has more than 12,000 parishes and more than 250 monasteries. This church is made up of Ukrainians. Its bishops, clergy and parishioners were born in Ukraine and are Ukrainian citizens. They are patriots of their country. And from the beginning of the current tragic military conflict, they have taken the side of Ukraine. And yet, none of that tends to help they are still being persecuted. Now, a significant number of international figures, and that includes church hierarchs, have recently spoken out in support of the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church and its first primate, Metropolitan Anufri of Kiev and all Ukraine. For instance, on the official Facebook page of the Patriarchate of Antioch, a message from Patriarch John of Antioch in all the East was published, in which he expressed words of sympathy and support due to the ongoing persecution of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. With joyful sorrow, we embrace you in the Lord during these days of the Great Fast, as we prepare for our Lord's death and resurrection. We write to you at this difficult moment in the history of the Venerable Ukrainian Orthodox Church, a moment that calls to mind the words of the Holy Apostle Paul. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Similar statements of support have been made by various other hierarchs of the Orthodox Church and religious figures, including the Pope of Rome and the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches. At the United Nations, they've also noticed this issue. On the 24th of March, the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights published a report on religious freedom in Ukraine for the period from the 1st of August 2022 to the 31st of January 2023. In particular, it referred to bills number 8221, 8262 and 8371 discriminating against the canonical church and shared concerns about the application of the so-called security measures by the Ukrainian secret services against the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. We hope and pray that this vast international support will truly help the persecuted canonical church in Ukraine. Since the announcement of the Ukrainian state to expel the monks of the Kiev Pechersk Lavra out of their home, the Orthodox faithful of Ukraine have been flocking to their beloved monastery by the thousands in a show of faith. This past Sunday, the church commemorated Saint John of the Letter. The main divine liturgy at the Kiev Pechersk Lavra was celebrated by His Beatitude Metropolitan Anufri of Kiev and all Ukraine who was joined by seven other hierarchs and the monastery clergy. Thousands of parishioners and pilgrims joined them in prayer. After the reading of the Holy Gospel, the Ukrainian primate addressed his flock with a homily, encouraging the faithful to continue praying for and with the brethren of the Lavra. In particular, he said the following, I ask your holy prayers, that we ask God to allow us to continue to stay in this holy monastery so that the brethren who raised the Lavra from the ruins and made it as beautiful as we see today can stay here and pray to God. There are many philosophers, politicians and speakers in the world who talk a lot but pray little. But the world lives not by verbosity but by prayer. The world needs not verbosity but prayer so that man might return his mind to God, remember his high destiny that God created us, placed us on this earth not to destroy this earth, destroy each other, not to kill each other, insult each other, but to live in peace, harmony and love both for God and for each other. 
and our monks pray for this in the holy monastery day and night. Following the call of His Beatitude, we ask you all to please continue to pray for the persecuted canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church, its first hierarch, Metropolitan Anufri of Kiev and all Ukraine, and for peace in the whole world. Now back to more optimistic news from the African continent. Last week we spoke about the baptism of dozens of adults and children in Tanzania. The Orthodox faith is rapidly growing in Africa, with more and more people joining the Orthodox Church. Recently, an Orthodox news media, Ortho Christian, has reported that a sizable plot of land donated by the Tanzanian government to the Orthodox Church was consecrated in the western region of Shinyanga. According to the Ortho Christian, 495 acres were donated by the government of President Samia Hassan to the Diocese of Bukaba and Western Tanzania of the Patriarchate of Alexandria to be used for the interest of the people. The land was consecrated by Metropolitan Chrysostomus of Bukaba in the presence of state authorities from the region of Shinyanga. Afterwards, a meeting was held at the offices of the governor of Shinyanga, where the Metropolitan had the opportunity to thank the government for its donation. In turn, the governor thanked the church for its spiritual work for the progress of Tanzania and the people. We pray that with the help of God, this missionary work in Africa will continue. Meanwhile, that's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Orthodox View.